What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. Uh, once again, apologies, I am very uh, stuffy nose today, so I put some vapor rub on my nostrils and I have a menthol cough drop in my mouth. I am doing my best not to be stuffy, but sometimes I'm just a stuffy guy. So, what are we talking about today? Today's video is going to be discussing five Pokemon I think are actually heavily underrated in VGC 2023. Now, keep in mind that we are still before the first official event. These, this is based off of like uh, usage stats uh, from Picolytics and tournament results that were unofficial because they weren't real regionals. Um, that being said, we have a pretty good understanding of what's good and what isn't good right now, and that's what I chose my uh, my top five based off of. So yeah, if you guys enjoy this gameplay and time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon competitive content. Uh, I said that in the wrong order, but yeah. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, and let's go ahead and get into this. So, uh, the way I've ordered this is actually you know, uh, least underrated to most underrated. So here's a little preview. Bop, 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 bop. There you go. Uh, and also, like, keep in mind, the reason something is underrated isn't exact was it like when i say like something is more underrated than something else it doesn't mean that like haxorus is the greatest competitive pokemon ever to live and we don't and we just like don't understand that yet it's not that it's it's more like the the value that it provides to a team is more underestimated than that of like a palafin hero but yeah uh if that makes sense let's go ahead and get into it so palafin hero is my number five uh, Palafin Hero isn't like the most underused Pokemon ever, but I do think it has the potential to be absolutely busted if played correctly. Uh, basically, this guy has one of the strongest priority moves in the game. Uh, Jet Punch is 60 base power. Uh, coming off of Stab on, uh, you know, a water type like Palafin, that's actually 90 base power, which is stronger than uh, non-stab extreme speed, which is still quite strong. Um, and it's 100% accurate, and it's, it's basically just like a better Aqua Jet. Uh, a good a good comparison is actually uh, Bullet Punch. It's as strong as Scizor Bullet Punch with Technician. Like, that's how you have to think about it. Because Scizor's Bullet Punch is 40 base power, goes up to 60 with Technician, and then you get like 90 off of it because of Stab. Uh, this guy has some pretty busted stats. Keep in mind, this this is all at the expense of having to have a weaker Palafin at the start of the game with some pretty bad stats. 100 HP, 100 speed are the two highest stats. Uh, 70 attack. It's quite bad. Um... But you have to keep in mind that VGC is a game that's heavy on switching already. Like, if you have, like, a Palafin that you lead off with, you have a few options. You can run Flip Turn, which I don't actually recommend that much. I think Flip Turn is, like, okay. Um, but off of 100 base speed, if you're going to go for, like, the Flip Turn in the face of a Garchomp, they can possibly just one-shot you. <laughs> like, it, it has the potential to do that, right? So keep that in mind. Also, like, Tailwind plus, like, Specs Golden Go Shadow Ball can one-shot this thing with, like, low special defense. Uh, so... Maybe it's best just to hard switch it out, and with that, you can get in like an Intimidate Mon. Like, Arcanine is not a bad partner for it. It's water, like, you know, Arcanine's a fire type, Palafin's a water type. You get a free switch in. With that in mind, that very, very low bar for setup allows you to get access to this monster of a Pokemon. 100 HP, 160 attack, 97 defense, 106 special attack, 87 special defense, 100 speed. Like, honestly, if this thing had 103 speed, allowing it to outspeed Garchomp, Busted Pokemon needs to be banned, uh, but it doesn't. This guy is going to be an absolute menace. Uh, 160 attack is really high. Uh, let me compare it to something. Let's look at like Slacking. Slacking is a Pokemon with like legendary tier stats. Or actually, no, let's let's compare it to like Regigigas because Regigigas is an actual legendary Pokemon, right? <clears throat> it's got oh, what's its like base stat total? I don't know, but Palafin's base stat total is 650. That's quite high. Regigigas is around that same range. 110 HP, 160 attack, 110 defense, uh, 80 special attack, 110 special defense, 100 speed. These guys are really close in stats. The only thing is, like, this guy has, like, some investment in special attack where this guy doesn't. And that's, like, the major difference. But, yeah, also, this guy's, like, bulkier, but it's 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 whatever. Um, keep in mind that this Pokemon has access to a wide variety of moves. Uh, Jet Punch is going to be your main water step. You could also drop it for, like, Choice Band Wave Crash. Uh, or like, you know, run like a choice band set instead of what I have here. I'm running like a bulk up set. Um, but choice band is devastating. You can run like wave crash, jet punch, close combat. And then the last move is up to your discretion. Like it's got a few options. Um, ice punch isn't that bad. You could run like Terra Blast and run a, or Zen Headbutt even. Like Zen Headbutt isn't a bad option for beating Amoongus. Uh, because if you're running like Jolly Choice Band, it's, it's basically going to come like really, really close to one shotting. Um, 
Terra Fire, you can use to like prevent burns. Uh, Terra Grass, you can use to like resist like Earthquake from Garchomp if you want to do that. But Terra Water is also just as terrifying. Keep in mind that Jet Punch is already like super, super strong. But like if you go Terra Water and you have, you know, let's say like just Jolly Max Attack Choice Band, your Jet Punch gets an adaptability boost. So uh, adaptability off of, or, well, your Terra adaptability, you know, it's not the same thing, but uh, Jet Punch, instead of getting a 1.5 times multiplier, now gets a two times multiplier, making it a 120 base power, uh, a 120 base power priority move, which is devastating coming off a 160 base attack. This guy, I think is pretty underrated. Like it's not, it's not the fact that people don't know he's strong. It's the fact that like, it doesn't see as much usage as it should be right now. Um, like it's not even in like top 20, like so Titan has more usage than Tinkaton has more usage than this thing. Granted, not in tournaments, but even like in like tournament results, which I don't have pulled up right now. Um, <laughs> as far as tournament results go, it's it's also not being used uh, as much. It did get like second place though at the uh, the first side event for that um, for that German regional, I believe. Uh, but yeah, that, that's my thoughts on Palafin Hero. I think it has a lot of potential. Number four, uh, Toad Scroll. Toad Scroll. I actually don't have a set for. Funny enough, but I, I just like made one up. Uh, here's the thing. I think a lot of people don't like Mycelium Might because it makes your priority moves or your uh, your status moves go last in their priority, but it is kind of cool because um, it allows you to spore things like uh, Magic Bounce Pokemon. You can spore a Hatterene. Uh, you can spore an Insomnia Pokemon. Uh, you can, even more importantly, spore a Golden Go. And this guy is like a pretty tough Golden Go check. Actually, let me pull this up. Let me pull this up right now. Let me run this calc in front of you right now. If we just take like a Toad Scroll, whatever, here, Toad Scroll Defensive Trick Room, sure, whatever, and uh, a Golden Go. Life Orb, sure. Life Orb, let's Terrastal. Your Make It Rain, even though like this guy has four special defense investment, right? And Make It Rain is Modest Life Orb Adaptability. It's doing 80% to which this guy can just Spore through the good is gold because of mycelium might or even trick room and then earth power it next turn earth power is a two shot keep that in mind i think trick room earth power or trick room spore is gonna be well no spore is better because you're gonna like go last next turn anyways but yeah that's that's like really cool for it uh it makes it uh, a hard check for uh these like heavy hitters in the format um it's able to like you know just spore golden go spore uh garchomp uh hydragon is one of the best attackers in the game right now because of it's like naturally high special attack so that's really huge um uh, also keep in mind this thing this thing like resists garchomp so while it doesn't have like the best physical defense you can invest in such a way that like you just beat garchomp outright uh and another thing that people really sleep on is the value that uh minus priority spore can bring to a team so here's the thing uh it, it, with spore if you put something to sleep it's guaranteed to have one turn of sleep. Now, let's say that you outspeed like a, 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 a Hariyama that like doesn't have Flame Orb um, and you sleep it. And then that turn, it doesn't move. And then the next turn, you want to do something. Well, the thing is, it technically already burned a turn of sleep because you prevented its move. I get that this is like sort of like a built in hindrance, but it is kind of nice knowing that the next turn that Pokemon is shut down no matter what. That's kind of cool. It also gets some decent moves uh, at its disposal. Knockoff is pretty huge. Dazzling Gleam is pretty huge. Reflect type, that's weird. I don't think it's that good, but I just want to point that out. That's a thing. It gets taunt, which is pretty awesome, even though it's like a slow taunt. Uh, it is like a, a very decent tool. But yeah, uh, I think Toad Squirrel has a lot of potential. It has been on a few like really nice teams, but uh, I don't think it's been explored nearly as much. But yeah. All right. Number three, Bex Caliber. I would argue this guy is one of the scariest Pokemon in the game, period. 145 base attack doesn't seem that high uh, in the grand scheme of things, considering, you know, Palafin Heroes running around. Um, but it has really nice bulk. 115 HP, 145, uh, 145 attack, 92 defense, uh, 86 special defense, 87 speed is a very good spread. It is a Dragon Ice type, which isn't very good defensively. You're weak to Fairy, Steel, Fighting. Uh, it's it's not it's not a very good defensive type, especially considering those are all very great offensive types that it's weak to. But it's going to be one of the Pokemon that takes the most advantage out of the Terra uh, mechanic, because turning into a pure Terra, or turning into a pure uh, Dragon with Terra, allows it to now resist fire moves, which it already gets a benefit from. So this thing has the ability Thermal Exchange, right? If you switch in on like a Volcarona Heat Wave or a Will-O-Wisp from like a Rotom, you get plus one attack and you're incapable of being burned. 
Plus one attack is all this guy needs to really get going. A dragon dance and that like, let's say you like dragon dance and take like a fire move on the same turn. You're now at plus two attack, plus one speed, allowing you to outspeed Dragapult. And then if you tear a dragon in Glaive Rush, neutral hits will always pretty much get one shot. If you're at like plus two, Glaive Rush will like one shot anything with Terra Dragon. Um, resisted hits, I've seen this thing like KO things that it really shouldn't have. It's kind of, it's kind of devastating. So I think Max Calibre is quite good. Uh, being able to have that uh, ice stab and ice coverage without having to remain in ice type is really nice for it. And I think the built-in burn immunity is like just super, super solid, especially considering burn is one of the more common ways to reduce damage with Intimidate not being nearly as good this gen. That's something to keep in mind. Uh, Ice Shard is also quite good because it means that you can pick off things um, that would outspeed you. Uh, if you don't want to run Dragon Dance, you can even just run like Sword Dance, Ice Shard. That's kind of cool. You can tear into like other types too. Uh, I don't think I recommend Terra Steel because then you like lose to Garchomp even harder. Uh, but yeah, like there are a lot of decent Terra types this guy can take advantage of. Uh, and it just makes him like a really threatening Pokemon if you get going. And I have seen like some people respect Bax Calibur in the latter a little bit more. I've actually personally made a Bax team with um, Lava Plume, Choice Scarf, Armor Rouge. Because if you Terra Dragon and then like Lava Plume, you have a chance to like burn everything around you. And that makes Bex Calibur even bulkier because everything's burnt. Uh, but then you Dragon Dance up and like sweep with uh, Ice School Spear or Glaive Rush. That's another thing. I prefer Ice School Spear over um, over Ice School Crash because it's more accurate. And while the damage can be as low as 50, uh, it can also be as high as 125, which is pretty cool. Uh, I forget what the average damage is, but it's not like it's not that much lower than Ice Punch in the grand scheme of things. So I prefer it. So yeah, that is Bex. My number two. It's gonna be Appleton. This one's a little bit controversial, but I do think Appleton is very underrated right now. Um, it's not like the best Pokemon, but it is it is slept on. Um, this is a format that really rewards good grass types on your team. Most of the best grass types in the format aren't even grass types, and that's really crazy. Appleton is a Pokemon with access to Iron Defense and Body Press, as well as Leech Seed and Protect, and the amazing ability Thick Fat. Thick Fat means that uh, it takes half damage from ice and fire moves. Uh, and I believe it also can't be frozen. I forget, I don't think that's actually true, but yeah, uh, you take half damage for that basically. Uh, and if you Terra Grass, you become a much better defensive Pokemon because your ice weakness is now cut in half. You're no longer times four weak. Now it's just like a neutral hit. Fire is uh, a neutral hit still. Uh, you're only really weak to like the standard grass weaknesses, which haven't stopped Terra Grass Pokemon from being good in the format. This also somewhat becomes like a hard Garchomp check, um, allowing it to just like, you know, go for like Iron Defense, Body Press, Leech Seed, and like stall it out. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Protect also allows you to like get a little bit more recovery off of it. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like a good Pokemon, right? Um, matchups that it does well into, uh, if you run like a max special defense set, Hydreigon has some trouble breaking you because after a single Draco Meteor, if you decide to just like protect and stall out after getting that like HP back, you're going to do just fine. Uh, Meowskarada isn't going to be able to break you if you have a couple iron defenses up because as a grass type, you resist flower trick. Uh, and you're not really worried about like leech seed anyway, or not, you're not really worried about U-turn anyways, even if it's like protean. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, I quite like that. I, I think that it's actually a really decent Pokemon. And my number one is Haxorus. <clears throat> and someone had to talk me into this one. Actually, someone tried to talk me into Haxorus like a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't believe them. And then I started messing around with it and then losing to it. Uh, Haxorus is kind of insane. And there's a, there's a pretty straightforward reason for that. Um, usually Haxorus loses to Garchomp outright, to Hydreigon outright, to just faster Pokemon outright. I think that Haxorus might be the Pokemon that benefits the most from Terra in this format. Uh, because it has a lot of really great Terra options. Keep in mind, Haxorus is a Pokemon with 97, uh, with 97 speed and 147 attack. And, and Dragon Dance, like that's huge. It also has a wide variety of moves that it can use. First Impression, Iron Head, Poison Jab, Rock Slide, Shadow Claw, Earthquake. Close Combat is like the biggest one. It can do a lot. I think that honestly, like Terra Ground Haxorus might be a thing that is worth looking into. Uh, because of Mold Breaker. Keep in mind how many Pokemon rely on Levitate to be good this format. Uh, all of the Rotom forms are quite good. Um, <clears throat> all of, or what is it? Uh, Hydreigon is like only really like super, super viable because it can like Terra Steel and have less weaknesses and like hard check Garchomp because it's like levitating. So 
if Haxorus can live or outspeed uh, a Hydreigon, it's going to be able to get a Dragon Dance off. And like, let's say it's like, let's say it's like the uh, the Terra Fire variant. You Earthquake and one shot it because you're 147 base attack at plus one. Or let's say it's like it stays like a, a Steel type or like a Dark type. Close combat can deal with it. Honestly, like I was heavily considering not even running Stab on this guy and putting like first impression on it because then it also beats uh, Meow Scarada. It just one shots that thing. It's a really interesting Pokemon that I think is like super, super overlooked right now. And I think I want to build a team around it. So yeah, that's my number one. Obviously not the greatest Pokemon ever, but it is very, very underestimated. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.